Number 17. What percentage of the acceleration at Earth's surface is the acceleration due to gravity at the position of a satellite located 300 kilometers above Earth? All right. So here we have a picture. Here's the Earth in black. Right? The Earth has a radius of 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. And here is one position where the satellite is at Earth's surface. And then here's the other position where the satellite is 300 kilometers above Earth's surface. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the percentage of the acceleration at this location compared to this location, right? That's basically what the question is asking. So let me call this location A and location B. Now, they want to find the percentage of A against B, right? Or meaning it says percentage um, of the acceleration on the surface com basically compared to that of the acceleration due to gravity, right? At the position of the satellite located 300 kilometers above Earth. So I'm going to frame this problem as basically, it's basically a percentages, remember, are basically fractions, right? Multiplied by 100. Okay, so I'm just going to do this whole problem as a fraction and then at the end multiply it by 100. So I'm trying to find this, the acceleration at point A as a fraction of the acceleration at point B. Okay, now, if we look on the right-hand side, we have some you know, formulas that involve uh, accelerations in them and so on and so forth. But I think the biggest key to this problem is actually realizing that this formula is a formula that we can utilize in order to solve our problem, even though it doesn't have the acceleration due to gravity in it. So why is that the case? Well, remember, force is equal to mass times acceleration. And the force and the acceleration are directly proportional to one another. So if acceleration goes up by half, right, then the, uh, well, it wouldn't go up by half, right? It would, it would go up, let's say acceleration went up, uh, you know, 50%, right? Then the force would have gone up 50% as well, all right? Or if the acceleration goes down by 50%, then the force would go down by 50%. They're direct related. So that being the case, I know that percentage-wise, whether I find the percentage of the accelerations to one another or I find the force due to gravity and compare those to one another, they're going to be fractionally the same exact thing. They're fractionally equivalent. Okay, so these things will be equal to one another. Now, knowing that that is the case, and remember, I just discussed that because they're are directly proportional, right? When one goes up by, let's say, uh, two, the other will go up by a value of two as well. So being that that's the case, I'm now going to continue my problem using this as my fraction, okay? And what I'm going to begin to start doing is start to substitute in this part of the equation for my values of f. All right, so let's take that as the next step. Okay, so here g, remember, is just a constant. So I have g multiplied by the mass of the first object multiplied by the mass of the second object all over the radius squared. Okay, so I'll call this radius A. That will be then divided by G, right, times the mass of the first object, mass of the second object, all over the radius squared of B. Now, here's the uh, interesting thing, right? When we think about this, this kind of looks like a crazy fraction, but remember, when you have this numerator being divided by this denominator, you can think about it as multiplying the numerator by the reciprocal of the, de of the uh, denominator. Right? So I can just rewrite this now to look something kind of like this. G, M1, M2, all over RA squared times the reciprocal now. R squared B, all over G, M1, M2. Now, interestingly enough here, we get a lot of things that cancel, right? The Gs are the same, that's just the gravitational constant. That will not change. And the mass one and mass two, well, one of them stands for the mass of the satellite, and the other stands for the mass of the Earth. But they're the same in both cases, so that goes bye-bye. So what are we left with? We are left with R squared sub B all over r squared sub a. So this literally is what my fraction boils down to. Okay? Now, can we go about and plug in some numbers? Well, yeah, right? Don't we know all the don't we know the 
uh, radii here? So we do, right? So the radius at B was the radius of the Earth. So let me just rewrite it over here. R sub B squared over R A squared. So this is going to be the same thing as saying, right? This is the radius of B, the radius of the Earth, 6.38 times 10 to the sixth. And that's going to be squared. Okay, all over now, RA squared. Now, RA, remember, is this whole thing, okay? Because we're looking at its orbit, right? And its orbit originates here. So this whole thing is the radius. Okay, now how do I find the radius? Well, easy. You know this part, and you know this is 300 kilometers, so you just add them together. But please make sure that you add meters to meters, not meters to kilometers, okay? So simply just convert this into meters, Multiply it by 1,000, and you'll realize that it becomes 300,000 meters. So that's simple. So this is simply going to be 6.38 times 10 to the 6th plus 300,000 squared. And just plug it on in. Let's see. 6.38 times 10 to the 6th squared divided by, parenthesis, 6.38 times 10 to the 6th plus 300,000 and square it. Look at that. So now I get a value, a fractional value of 0 0.9, 0 0.912, right? Now again, that's not technically the answer because remember percents are always multiplied by 100. So simply just take this thing, multiply it by 100, right? It become 91.2%. And there you go. Thanks guys for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. Until next time.